So uh, you're probably wondering, how do I attach it? There's no backing. Well, we're gonna put some backing in right now. What you gotta do, first you gotta clear off this drywall, make sure there's no funke funke back there. Anything that's back there, little rocks or debris or anything, we're gonna put in some backing and if there's rocks and debris or garbage up there, it's gonna make your, uh, your patch sit funny so you can vacuum it out, you can just brush it aside, whatever you're gonna do. Then we're gonna put some backing in. Typically, I use like half inch garden stakes, but I don't have any half inch garden stakes with me right now, but I do have a two by four, so you can use two by fours, no big deal. I mean, we're only holding up the weight of a, of a piece of drywall, a patch, and that's like essentially nothing. So really, you don't need anything super, super sturdy. So I, I just have a piece of wood. I cut it about two inches longer so I can overlap the patch two inches on both sides. And go ahead and put both pieces in. Like that. So um, I'm using inch and a quarter, you can use inch and a half, inch and five eighths, whatever, uh, coarse thread drywall screws. And then I'm gonna go about an inch of a, an inch away from the edge of the patch. If you put your screw too close to the edge of the, the patch where you cut, when you put your screw in, bam, it's just gonna kind of cave in and it's not really gonna hold it really well. And then when you put your screws in, you don't want to kill it. All you want to do is get the screw tip, the head of the screw. You just want to get the head of the screw so it just goes past the drywall, the finished drywall here. I actually need to put this one in just a tiny bit more. But there's paper here and um, the drywall is covered in paper. And so you can puncture it. Obviously, you're going to puncture it with the screw but you don't want to puncture it with the head because then it kind of loses its holding force. So we're just going to go through and it should just kind of dimple in just a little bit. Oh, dude. <laughs> Picasso thought he was some type of artist. But I tell you what, that is art. All right. So we're going to put screws in all the way around, one on each corner. <laughs> All right, once your patch is in place, oh my gosh, dude, that is so strong. Incredible. Just kidding, it's no big deal. Then you're gonna take and you're gonna put your patch in using that backing. And this patch is gonna sit money. It's gonna sit perfect. Boom, that is perfect. Okay, so you might have a little bit of funkiness kind of hanging out, like this is kind of the paper's kind of shredded going around the corners. Um, anything that's kind of hanging down or whatever. Um, this is a good opportunity to just take a little razor blade and maybe cut some of those things off if they don't just come off or pull them off. Oh, it's <laughs> so good looking. Okay, so this is gonna be a step that you guys are tempted to skip, okay? Do not skip this step. Now, anytime that you have like a, a cut of drywall like this, you have to use drywall tape. You have to use drywall tape. I really like the double-sided, or sorry, the, the, the mesh tape that has a little bit of stick on one side, slightly sticky on one side. And all you do, they've got yellow and white and I don't know, they probably have other colors too, but I don't know the difference. These wires are driving me insane. Okay, all you gotta do is just take these and put them up on the wall. And some of you guys will flip out like, oh my gosh, Alan, your tape is overlapping itself. You got one piece of tape going on top of the other one. It's gonna be super hard to patch. No, it won't. It'll be super easy. This is really easy, guys. Don't get, don't get crazy. Don't trip. Don't worry. Okay, you guys can see my tape is a little bigger than my patch. I mean, it's okay if it's a little bit bigger, but like I'm excessive here. I'm like two inches too big. So it's okay, I just don't want to deal with it. So I'm just going to cut it off. Get away! You do. You don't okay, just don't do it. Don't do it. Right. That's it, man. That was super easy. Super easy. Uh, the next step is we're going to mix some drywall mud. Um, I'm going to use 20 minute mud. 20 minute hot mud comes in powder. You mix it with water. Um, it stores for like ever. I've had stuff stay stores for years. Great. 
super cheap. I'll flash a picture of it. Highly recommend it. They're not paying me or anything like that. It's just a really good product. So uh, let's get that mixed and put some mud on the wall. I thought a long time how to like get an analogy of the right consistency of drywall mud. Um, I kind of think it's like 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 Dairy Queen ice cream, you know, when they mix the ice cream and then they turn it upside down, doesn't fall out of a cup. It's kind of like that consistency. Same thing. I turn my blade upside down, doesn't fall off the blade. Um, once the 20 minute mud is mixed, you're on a clock and you got to get it on the wall, um, and you can't re reuse it. So try not to mix too much. So uh, what I do is I uh, my first patch. The for the the keyword for the first patch the first sorry the first coat is cover the tape. You're gonna hear me say that 19,000 times in the next 30 seconds. Cover the tape. Cover the tape. Cover the tape. Don't worry about getting too smooth. Cover the tape. So I use my eight-inch drywall knife. I knock off the edges like that. How you can see I kind of knocked off the edges like that. Um, just makes it go on a little easier for me. Just my technique. Anyways, and then we're just going to cover the tape. We're gonna make it as smooth as we can, but we're not gonna get crazy, bro. We're just gonna cover that tape, dude. Okay, and you're gonna see that there's all kinds of imperfections and we're gonna to try to minimize them as much as we can. But cover the tape. Okay, so on your... Once you have a decent amount of mud on your patch, we're gonna do a final pass all the way around. We're gonna try, like once I said, we're gonna try to keep it smooth, but um, we're gonna put a lot of pressure on the outside of the blade, on the outside of the blade as I go around the outside of the blade, whatever blade's on the outside. What makes a patch really hard to see is that it's thin on the edges. I mean, obviously the drywall texture is gonna be thicker here than it is here because I've, I've added drywall mud. So it's gonna be pretty thick here, but you can't see it because I've thinned the edges. And that's the trick, man. A lot of pressure on the outside of the blade. So we're gonna do that now. Don't put too much pressure that your tape, oh dude, look at that. My tape just popped out, you see that? Whoa, no bueno, dude. All right, let's fix that. There we go. Maybe that was a little too much pressure there. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my, I made like that whole piece show up. That's okay, we're just gonna keep working with it. Find that happy medium of all my tape covered plus my edges being smooth. There we go. Now, if I can like just see my tape, that's okay. Like I can just kind of see some yelling of the tape. That's okay. I, I, it's, I, it's visible, but it's not really popping out. That's okay. I can deal with that. As long as all my tape is, is covered and kind of held down, what I don't want to see is I don't want to see any threads that are kind of like hanging down because they're going to hang down for forever okay now next step very important step is this mud you guys might you know I, we all want to conserve the environment i do too i've got some extra mud left over um it's done so hopefully you can have other patches or things you can throw it on if not you just got to throw it away and you got to wash your tools just like they're brand new if you don't get these things as close to brand new there's going to be little particles that are going to fall off on subsequent passes and these little particles, these little chunks of drywall mud, hardened drywall, are gonna drag through your mud. Then you're gonna be mad, then you're gonna be yelling and screaming and cussing, your wife's gonna hate you, you're gonna end up drunk in a ditch. Bro, trust me, I've seen it. You gotta clean your tools. All starts with cleaning uh, drywall tools. Here we go, round two. Round two, fight! So, um, I'm switching to my 12 inch blade now. And if you guys have, remember those lines from the first coat? Um, if you have any of those lines that kind of like stick up kind of funky, this is a good time to just scrape them off. Now you'll note that this isn't dry. I'm just kind of scraping the line down a little bit here. Um, this thing's not dry by any means. You can see out here that it's kind of like lighter white and here it's kind of like darker white. Um, but it's hard. It's hard so I can go ahead and I can put on another coat, right? You can wait till it's completely dry, but you don't have to. It's a nice thing about um, 20 minute mud is it ready to work in about 20 minutes so what we're trying to do what our goal is here is to make this as smooth as possible last time was covering the tape this time we want this thing smooth now I have this texture 
is pretty aggressive. So you're gonna find out like what I mean aggressive is I mean it's like kind of thick, right? It's kind of rough. So as I'm going around these outsides and we're trying to keep it tight and put that pressure, you're gonna find that your, your blade kind of chirps and it's gonna get little wrinkles and ripples in it. We can sand those out later. Um, but we wanna get a good thick coat on, I'm sorry, a good smooth coat on. Make sure it's covering up everything all the way around as smooth as we can go. This is looking pretty smooth here. Um, for my final pass, or passes, I'm gonna do it again with the pressure on the outside. That's super important, super important, pressure on the outside. Now, if you have a lot of impression, uh, imperfections, that's okay. We can sand those out, but sanding kinda sucks. So do yourself a favor, make your patch as smooth as you can now, and minimize the amount of sanding that you have to do. This is super easy, guys. It's super fast, right? Now, I've been doing it a while, so you know I'm a little more used to how the blade works and everything. But you know, if you guys are doing this at home for your first time, you'll see that it's really not that bad. Um, I'm going to take a picture of this, let it dry, and then I'm going to dry sand it. There is a technique to wet sand. But I, in my opinion, if you want to get this type of texture really, really nice and really perfect, you've got to dry sand it, which means i got to come back tomorrow and do it when it's nice and, and dry, dry, dry. Okay, don't try to rush this because you'll it, it doesn't work. I'm going to go ahead and sand this and uh, get it ready for texture. Now, when you're sanding, I feel like this is the most important part is the dry sand. You can, you can maybe do a wet sand, but dry sand is by far superior, especially if you're shooting for an invisible patch. Um, you want to make it smooth, right? I mean, that's going to be really important to make it smooth, but what really makes a patch stand out is the edges right here, all the way around. If when you have a finished ceiling, if you have an edge still to your patch, you're going to see it. Anything that you see now, you're going to see later. You hope that it covers it up, but it won't. And you'll be able to trace this patch all the way around. So that's going to be really key is that we sand out that defined edge all the way. Um, use a sanding block and some sandpaper and just no real no magic. Just go to it. The idea is, is that you don't want to see your line around your texture. You want your patch to kind of be busted up by the other texture as they kind of mix together. So it's okay, it's okay that our patch is mixing with the old stuff. Just make sure you can't define your line all the way around. And don't go too low that you run into the tape. As a matter of fact, I ran into the tape right here, just a little tiny bit. So I have my choice, I can either add more mud and cover it up, or I can do, um, an extra effort and try to put a patch, like put the texture right on top of that, which is what I'm gonna to try to do. Anyways, uh, I'll take a picture, show you all around. It's really smooth. You can't see the edge of my patch anywhere. And all kind of my patch just blends seamlessly into the existing texture. When your wall is at that place, you're ready to put your texture on the wall. So let's go ahead and do that. I've gone ahead and mixed up my drywall texture. I'm ready to apply it. My patch is sanded. I took a vacuum and I kind of got all the dust off of the uh, patch itself so that I know the new stuff will stick. And so when you mix this up, this is not 20 minute mud, this is drywall texture. And you're gonna mix it up a little on the soupy side, about the consistency of like pancake batter. The idea is, this. now, now also keep in mind, this technique is for patching uh, stomp drywall texture. This is not for laying stomp drywall texture, right? When you lay, it's totally different. They roll the texture onto the ceiling and then stamp it. Right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of drywall mud onto a nice flat con uh, container, and then we're gonna stamp just what we need. So I'm using the lid to a storage box. It's got a little dimple on top. You can use like a, a paint tray, whatever, whatever you've got. Um, so I've mixed up my drywall texture. It's a little on the soupy side. And I'm gonna spread it out on this container. <coughs> I'm 
<clears throat> okay, so then I take my brush. This is my, my stamp brush. I'm gonna put it in here and then I'm gonna test it in here. What I'm looking for is I wanna see like a little oval and then I don't wanna see a big mush around the oval. I wanna see like, like a flower petal, like little fingers going all the way around. If that's what I've got, I know I'm ready. I got the consistency right. So I just go in here, get a good amount of drywall texture on my brush. Look something like that. Get it all around. And I'm just gonna top it to this cardboard and see how it turns out. Maybe the texture is wrong. So I can see it's a little thick in some spots. See, it came out a little thick here, but everywhere else came out okay. When we go, this is a knockdown style texture. When I knock that down, that's gonna turn into mush. But everything around here tells me that it's okay. So I think my consistency is right. I just need to be a little more careful that I don't put it on so thick. So another thing that you can do is you can put it on here, put it on your brush, and then you can stamp it on your cardboard, get some of that junk off. I can see I've got a big clump there. I can wipe some of that off. And then I can stick it to my ceiling there. So, and then you're gonna to wanna to look at your ceiling and look at the style that they use. Did they, did they go in perfect rows all the way down? Is it really tight patterns? Is it really spread out patterns? Um, on this one, the, there's no pattern. They just kinda of like stamped all over the place, twisting every which way all at once, which uh, kind of makes patching a little easier because I can just kind of go all the way around. So this brush is ready to go. I like the consistency. I like everything that's going on right now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put it on the ceiling. Okay, when I go and I put my texture on the ceiling, I'm not just gonna go just on my patch. I'm kinda gonna go about half the distance all the way around so that my new texture is also laying on my patch also on the existing texture. That's gonna make it look continuous. Oh, that kid's coming out really good. Kind of changing directions as I go around. I need more money. Okay, in a lot of cases, less is better. So uh, I'm gonna stick with that like that. So you can see I do have a couple, you could really see that I've got like a holes where there's no texture, but around here there's also places where there's no texture and it's kind of mixing with the texture that was before. So there is gonna give a little bit of texture in there. I kind of just changed the direction I went around. I didn't get too greedy. That's it, man. Um, I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back and knock it down, but it wasn't that bad, right? I mean, that was really easy to apply. Okay, so um, this stamp brush is a knockdown texture, which means we have to drag a trowel over it when we're done. Now, the right way to do this is when it's still wet, um, you just let it dry just a tiny bit, and then you just take a trowel and you baby breath drag that sucker across there, and you'll get that nice knockdown look. The problem is, if you apply just a tiny bit too much pressure, it flattens out and it's kind of ruined. All that work that you just did is kind of ruined. You, you have to scrap it off and you gotta start over again. So the way I do it works for me and it's gonna work for a lot of you guys at home that are just new to this. What I do is I wait for it to mostly dry. So this is probably 60 to 70% dry. And then I'm gonna take my 12 inch knife and you're gonna need some kind of pan because every time you drag, you're gonna to have to wipe your blade because there's gonna be little crusties that get onto your blade and they'll drag across your mud and it'll mess it up on future passes. So what I do is I go out here to the edge and I test it out here on the edge to see if it's just about right. And if I drag it, what I don't wanna see is I don't wanna see completely go flat. That's too wet. And I also don't want to uh, have to like put a ton of pressure on there to, to knock off that tip either, right? I just want to apply like a medium amount of pressure and then um, it should be good. Also note, when I do this, since it is a little dry, you're going to get kind of little fuzzies. Every time I pass, uh, pass the blade across my patch, it's going to make it a little bit flatter each time. So don't just keep passing your blade trying to get rid of those fuzzies. What you do is you just pass it by, get the look that you want, leave the fuzzies, 
and then come back later on when it's dry and you can just take your hand and wipe it like that or take a blade like this and wipe it, just gently wipe it and they fall right off with no effort whatsoever. Super easy. Right before you paint, just knock them off. Piece of cake. Okay, and this is gonna give you a nice clean look. So I'll come out here to the side. I'm gonna give it a little shot, see what I'm dealing with here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That just knocked off the tip. It leaves little fuzzies, but that's okay. We're gonna go for it. Okay. So we're just going to apply a medium amount of pressure. This thing is covered in fuzzies. It's okay. It's okay. I promise guys. They come right off later on, but it makes applying the, or doing the knockdown super easy. It's, it's, it's the exact look I want. It's the exact look I want. It's perfect. I really like that. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. If I keep going over the top of it, it's going to make it flatter and flatter. Um, you can see I've got some spots that don't have much texture, but the ceiling is just like that too. Most of it has texture, but there are a couple holes here and there that are flat. That's okay. This thing, when I paint it, is money. That was really easy, guys. You guys could do this at home. This is a super intimidating uh, uh, texture style, but I promise you guys it's not that bad. Give it a shot. Let me know how it goes. Hit like, hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.